Welcome back to the only TradingView tutorial series you'll ever need. In this part 3 we cover the drawing tools. Everything you've ever thought to ask but didn't know who or how, I'll get round to it. If I don't, make sure you tell me in the comments and I'll try and answer you there. At the end of this series you're going to be able to craft a masterpiece on your TradingView chart. Something worthy of an art gallery. Um, we'll start off on trend lines and we'll go all the way through to Gantt boxes. So if that sounds like something helpful, watch on and think about giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel and commenting. Thanks. Welcome back to the charts. In previous episodes we have covered searching for and adding tickers, our watch list, Time intervals, editing our chart to show candles instead of a line, adding and editing indicators, and also the three different ways you can create alerts. In this episode, we're going to cover the drawing tools. There are far too many drawing tools for one man to cover in just one episode, so we're going to split it up into various parts. I imagine a lot of the people that come back to this video having seen it once will be looking for a specific part about a specific tool and I guess the YouTube algorithm will deem their viewing experience to have been unsatisfactory because of that behaviour. Well in fact they might find it to be a great video so if you do like it please give me a, a like or a comment or a subscribe and in this first part we shall cover everything from trend lines down to pitchforks and GAN boxes and our FIB tools. Our first option on the drawing panel is our crosshair, which we could change to a dot or an arrow if you get that Mac nostalgia vibe or an eraser, but we'll keep it as a crosshair. Skip to the bottom now and we'll turn on magnet mode. This makes our drawings stick to our candles, which makes it much easier and quicker and for less fiddly work. Trend lines. First up, just a normal trend line, now even easier to draw with our magnet tool turned on. Also in this option we have trend angle if you want to measure the angle at which your trend line is drawn, as you can see 29 degrees. Or alternatively you can have the info line which will tell you Along with the trend angle, will tell you the time in bars or distance and the price change in percentage or actual values. A handy tip with trend lines is you can also right click, settings, style, extend right. Alternatively, you can extend left if you're that kind of person. Also hidden behind trend lines by a click is horizontal lines, excellent for marking areas of support and resistance. With our magnet tool turned on, couldn't be easier. Click. Click. Initially they come out quite prominent, but you can right click settings visibility and reduce their opacity to something slightly less intrusive. You can also change it to a dashed line and then it definitely only features in your mind when you're thinking about it. We also have horizontal rate. This is just a horizontal line that doesn't extend to the left. It can be helpful if you don't want to clog up old analysis that you might later come back to. We also have the vertical line, which is self-explanatory, and the cross line, which is a combination of the two. Helpful if you're trying to point somebody's attention to something. The rest of these options are variations on the theme until we get to the parallel channel, which we plot by doing the two high points and then the low, like so. Some people like to use parallel channels to mark areas of support and resistance. If we take a wee look at the four hour chart here. So we were to mark in um,
this line as being an important area of support at the moment, for example, then we could stylize our channel so that we had a little zone. It's important that, for example, it doesn't cross this area. And then you have what some people like to use as a little box. Alternatively, you can just use a box. Our other channel options are self-explanatory in their differences, but plotted in the same way. Our next set of tools are for price prediction. So if you have a way of honing your edge via drawings, it's very likely it'll be in this selection here. First up, we have our pitchfork, which is useful in analyzing breaks from the trend. So the way you plot it is by picking your market pivot. This is a downtrend, so we pick at the peak, be here. Then we pick a subsequent low or trough to the right of it, which would be here. And then again, our peak, which would be here. And that plots our pitchfork. We have our median and this is our handle. You can right click to modify it and do shift, which is slightly less of a steep um, downtrend here, or if we were in an uptrend, that would be slightly less of a steep incline. And you can also do the original pitchfork, which is a very dramatic incline here or downturn. Um, and that's how you draw your pitchforks. You might find occasion to use a shift pitchfork or a modified shift if you're trading a congested asset like Forex. Below our pitchfork options, we have our GAN analysis tools. And the simplest way I can explain GAN analysis is where most technical analysis is measuring price over time and applying patterns. GAN analyzes patterns over price and time. That is to say it measures uh, both where the price has been and where it is now in order to hopefully predict a future. Um, some people would call that fractals and I'm not disinclined to agree with them. In order to do any GAN analysis, you'll want a clean chart. So we will remove our indicators for now. We'll stay on the daily time frame, but we'll zoom out a considerable amount so that we can find our all time high and all time low. We'll throw on the horizontal lines that we talked about earlier to mark those out for us. Um, accuracy is important with GAN, but for demonstration purposes, let's just go with that. GAN theory relies on specific time intervals, yet our charts are to a degree all scale. So we need to first square and then fix the range of our chart. We can do that uh, by right clicking, select settings and then scales, and go down here to lock price bar ratio. Change this to um, 50 because we're doing Bitcoin and we've got it as so. This allows us to start fixing the position of the GAN square to its intended price time intervals. Now, we still need to determine our horizontal scale, so don't scroll on your mouse yet. Select the GAN square from the drawing pane and then plot the bottom on our horizontal low and take it up until the green 45 intersects with our all time high, as you'll see here, and plot it like so. Now we're ready to plot our GAN box. So select the GAN box, and as you began at the bottom, begin again here and drag it out to meet at the top where we took our 45 and click OK. Again, accuracy is important with GAN, but for demonstration purposes, 
I'll do it like so. This is the hard part done really. So now we can uh, scroll and delete to our heart's content. Uh, first off, we'll get rid of the square and we'll remove our horizontal highs and lows. Now, um, Trading View by default doesn't give you the GAN angles, nor does it give you the GAN ratios. It goes with FIBs, which are all fine and well, but you can edit that by right clicking and selecting Settings. For a start, I'd get rid of the backgrounds because um, they're just a distraction. Uh, you'll need to turn on angles as I've got it selected here. And then um, none of these are helpful apart from the 50% line. So we'll remove these. And now we have a slightly more familiar GAN box. We'll clone this by clicking here and take it across. And we can see plot our held time high, like this over. And now it's very difficult to see at this perspective, but if we zoom in a little bit, Move it down. Now we have our GAN over our price action. Not all of these angles will be relevant on every time frame, but you can zoom in and look at it in different ways. Um, you could also, of course, um, in your settings panel, you can choose visibility with all drawings and you can set them to show up on certain time frames and not on others. Um, as we don't have the ability to save it anyway, because we're not in the pro accounts, we will just remove all of this. So as the sun sets on Edinburgh behind me, we're going to take a break from the drawing tools for now and we'll come back in the next one to talk about fibs. Not the bad kind of fibs that set your pants on fire, but the good kind that help us spot retracement levels and we're going to give them a dash of style too so they look nice and bring them into the future a little bit. So if that sounds helpful, come along and watch that. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Jamie. This hasn't been financial advice. This has been Tradespotting. <laughs>